be speaking on the voting improvements. Hello, my name is uh, Rick Weibel. I'm actually at 803 Elk Street in South Dakota, and you're asking why am I here? I'm here because I'm actually helping quite a few teams across the state of Minnesota <coughs> realize uh, the actual power that they have and kind of the issues that are facing Minnesota. The beauty of Minnesota statutes is that it really is about local control, local accountability, and local oversight. And the beauty of that, there's actually three statutes that give the county commissioners uh, great authority when it comes to selecting the ballot boards for the election judges. Another area is regarding the election equipment. You can choose whether or not to use them, upgrade them, and you also have complete oversight of them. Also, inspection authority over those machines as well to make sure you do your due diligence. Also, the poll pads themselves when it comes to electronic registration. So those are the three statutory areas that you have complete oversight on. One of the things that meeting with the local groups here throughout the state of Minnesota, I'm also a computer professional and expert, and I'm here to alert you that the EAC, the electronic or the Election Assistance Commission, .gov, so EAC.gov, if you go there and review your election equipment, Dominion 4.14.e, you will see that it was certified for Windows 7 and Server 2008. Unfortunately, Microsoft expired that on January 14th, 2020. So in essence, yes, it was certified, but it was no longer supported by the manufacturer. So in essence, if you wanna think about the EAC, is like the FDA. You bought a drug, that was expired. You bought milk and use it a year after its expiration date. That's the simple way that I can describe it to you. Also, we provide uh, security evaluations where we scan uh, all 87 counties in the state of Minnesota. 52% of them failed basic credit card security. So that kind of brings into question how secure is our elections, especially when the EAC and their own certification, if you look at that certificate online, it says right on page two that they don't certify that this is ready for use in an election. So that means also in their own certification, they advise you that you should also do your own certification. And if you review the state of Minnesota certification process, it's not very good. As a matter of fact, none of that equipment would even meet basic Department of Defense security at all. So I wanna thank you and I look forward in continuing this conversation with the board so that you can actually uh, understand more of the information and have the facts before you as some of the volunteers are wanting to actually go back to paper counting, which is the most secure way to conduct an election. Thank you very much. Our next person. Madam Chair, next we have Terry Dickinson of Big Lake, and she is speaking regarding the rally out front this morning. Hi. First of all, I want to th say that it's really great that you had um, an impromptu public hearing for the separate storm sewage system. Um, I would also like a, a public hearing on the sewage system that has become our election system. Um, you have the authority to remove the Dominion voting machines. Um, 206.58 subdivision 3 gives you the authority of the state, you have the authority to remove the Dominion systems. Subdivision 1 gives that same authority to the municipality, so we're going to them too. Just so, just so you know, they are considering not using the machines. Um, Mike Murphy at the um, rally today did state that he is, he is a mayor of Lionel Lakes and he is working on getting rid of the Dominion systems, or he has the ESNS systems in his city. Um, so we really appreciate the elected officials um, standing up and doing the right thing in, in people like Mike Murphy. Also, um, once again, we're going to ask you to give us a public hearing. I, there seemed to be some confusion with the county commissioners as to how a public hearing happens. Um, so what we were told by the county administrator is Barbara Barant, Chairman, you can give us a public hearing or any two of you can say we'll have a public hearing. You just have to agree and let us, let us have a public hearing. So again, we're going to ask you for that. Um, and we're also doing canvassing. We're going door to door. As you can see, there's a lot of people here. We are interested in having honest election system. Our elections, our, our votes are our liberty. Please give us the consideration as your constituents to let us discuss it with you in a public hearing. Thank you.
And our third person? Next we have Gary Townsager of Elk River speaking on election machines. Okay, thank you uh, this morning. I've been here a couple times before and I've had the opportunity to speak to you about election integrity and um, I always had something prepared, but today I really don't have anything prepared because I'm going to really speak from the heart. <clears throat> Actually, everything that Rick said I was going to say, <laughs> so that's not true. Um, but um, uh, the most important thing I want to say is that I'm a resident of Elk River. I'm a resident of Sherburne County. I'm a resident of, of Minnesota, and I'm a proud citizen of the United States of America. And the most important thing we have living here as a, as a citizen of the United States of America is our ability to vote, to make sure that our votes count. And if we don't know our votes count, nothing else matters. It's up to us to be able to tell people that our election is fair, and it's up to you, with the commissioners, to make sure it is. That's your responsibility. Now, Rick did talk about the Dominion voting machines. So easy. They run on Windows 7. Windows 7 was discontinued in February 14th of 2020. Isn't that a little embarrassing? Yeah. Yep. Can, is that acceptable? No. no, it's not acceptable. And why is that? Is it on purpose? We don't know, but I have my ideas that it probably is. Um, so there are some things that happened in our election that were so transparent, uh, or so, uh, that were not transparent, that we needed to, to be able to see. Do we have, uh, if we wanted to take a look at the Dominion machines, actually look at the machines. Can we do that? No, we can't. That's against the law. Do we have the codes to go in and find out what they were doing? No, we can't. It's against the law. Why can't we do that? We'll have to figure it out. <clears throat> I'm just going to say one, a couple more things. Just some statistics on the 2020 election. There were over 7,500 new voters in our election last in 2020. We had 16% increase in voter participation. Now, most of the time we'd say, boy, that's really good. We really appreciate that. We're really happy about it. <clears throat> but what we don't know, or what we, what we do know about those votes, is that they were totally skewed in a direction that was different than what uh, is normal for Sherburne County. 52% of the votes, those new votes, were for President Trump, and 48% were for Joseph Biden. So we're thinking that maybe Sherburne County is a red county. It is. But the idea to be able to switch votes a little bit in each county makes a big difference. So it's up to us to make sure that, that, that we do that, that we take care of our, our election, and uh, especially protect our rights to vote. So I just want to say that. So thank you very much. Go paper Gold. So our next person. Next, Madam Chair, we have Robin Sylvester of Crow Wing County, Pequot Lakes, speaking on election information. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, like we were, was introduced, I'm Robin Sylvester with Crow Wing County. As you can tell by my uh, urgent step up here uh, in front of the last speaker, I am super excited to be here today. We are fighting across this state. There's more than 30 counties right now doing foot canvassing work. That means going door to door and asking folks, one, did you vote in the 2020 election? Not who you voted for, but did you vote? If the answer was no, and there's a record of yes, that's called a phantom vote. Yeah. We've had about 4% phantom votes across these counties that are foot canvassing. And Sherburne County is number two on the counts of households that we visited. And their irregularities are no different than our Crow Wing County irregularities. The second question we ask, if you voted and it was yes, did you vote by in person, absentee, or mail-in? 7% of the folks that we've asked, on an average, have said I voted in person. And guess what? an absentee vote is recorded for them. Tell us how, when we go to vote in person, 
is converted to absentee. Yes, we had early voting because of COVID. If they, and we're asking them, did you vote early? If you voted early, it was converted to absentee. And these 7% are saying, no, I voted on election day at my precinct. Tell me how these machines are converting our in-person to absentee. How they are telling you, the county, that I, a person that didn't vote, have a, cast, a vote cast for me. The only way we can clean up this mess is to count these by hand. Amen. Sherburne County has an opportunity to step up and show Minnesota that you're going to lead us. Right. We, the people, deserve a free and fair election. Thank you. So number five is? Madam Chair, we have Carrie Watkins of St. Cloud also speaking on election machines. Good morning. My name is Kari Watkins. I'm from St. Cloud. And I'm actually reading a um, statement from a fellow Sherburne County resident. And then I have a follow-up on the Dominion machines. Excuse me. <laughs> Good morning. A friend of mine is an Air Force veteran who is wonderful with numbers. He ran an independent al analysis of the precinct data from the 2020 election. The data is 100% reliable, he told me. He asked me if I voted same party down ballot. Yes, I said, because I usually vote for party's principles. He asked if I thought that the president usually receives more votes than a candidate for state office. Yes, I said, because I know many people who only vote in the presidential elections. That is the big ticket item on the minds, in the minds of many. He then asked me if more people could name the president than their state or county elected officials. Definitely, I responded. He then explained the following. In Sherburne County, the Republican candidate for U.S. House, Congressman Emmer, received a total of 1,690 more votes than President Trump. Furthermore, the Minnesota Senate races cumulatively for Republican candidates received 504 more votes. To dive deeper into all of this a bit, all Elk River precincts posted more votes, votes cast for the GOP candidates for the Minnesota House, Minnesota Senate, and the U.S. House races than the Office of President. How does this happen? Is it because there was so much more advertising for local candidates? Did someone jump into the back of the ballot and vote for those candidates first? Was Trump hated here? Or was there something else, such as voting machines? I ask you these questions to get you thinking. This is not what the media will report. He sent me this statement and asked that I read it this morning. I look forward to him sitting down with township city officials and going over his data. He would certainly be willing to give information to county commissioners too, if you would be dedicated enough to, to liberty, to grant the citizens of your com communities a public hearing to discuss the election system that you have implemented. <clears throat> That's the end of his statement. But I also wanted to give you information um, on a forensic examination of do voting Dominion, Dominion voting machines in Colorado. Um, this just, they're similar to our machines, and you can go through and see uh, what they found. They uh, compared two different um, elections. And these are the key findings, so I'll just submit that as, as well as a statement. Thank you. Thank you. Our next person, then. Next, we have Richard Helms of Big Lake speaking on voting machines. Hi there, I'm Richard Helms. I've been in, in the Sherburne County for over 50 years now and worked in some public offices and whatever. But my my concern is to hear from all these people here today and that our, our machines are basically out of date and we don't have the programs up to date. And I've heard that, that uh, it costs a lot of money to do that. I can tell you that that's the board's responsibility to make sure the equipment is up to date and functioning the best way it can and hiding behind you don't have enough money is a poor excuse. I was on the board of directors for the Big Lake 
Monticello Big Lake Hospital for 14 years, and about the second year I was on there, we found out that if we didn't update and modernize the HVA system in the hospital, the hospital would close that summer. I was the one that vote, that made the uh, nomination to, to, uh, to approve the $400,000 there was to do that, and the board voted eight to nothing to do that, and what it did, it, it raised the taxes for everybody in the eight districts that the hospital is. Board, that's your responsibility. You're elected by the people to support the needs of the community, and we need those machines fixed. And sorry, there's no way, way you can get around not paying for it. There's all kinds of ways that commissions and boards can do that. So thank you for your time, and I appreciate it. But we need to fix that stuff because we can't have improper elections. You hear it all over the country, and let's not be it in Minnesota. Thank you. Have a good day. Number six. Next, Madam Chair, we have Casey Mahone of Elk River speaking on voting. Well, I'm clearly in the minority. <laughs> Good morning. I'm speaking to the commissioners, and thank you for the opportunity to speak about the Sherman County voting. So my question is, is it broken? Not from this group or others. I'm asking the commissioners, is it broken? That's my question. I attended your April 19th meeting to get a better understanding of this Star News advertisement by MidwestSwampWatch.com, which insists, quote, insists that you remove Sherman County voting machines. I didn't know they were broken. I don't know if they're broken. I'm speaking to the group. Please give me the respect that the protocols call for. I didn't know that they were broken. So I went and decided to do some research. I went to their website, which is not of Sherburne County. The speaker from this ad who spoke earlier does not live in Sherburne County. Some here then, two weeks ago, and now who support the swamp, some may not live in Sherman County. If, they, if so, they cannot vote and they do not pay taxes in Sherman County. I live here. I vote independently. I'm a retired Air Force officer. I pay Sherman County taxes. I am not a computer expert. I am not an activist. I try to be an informed citizen. With the exception of this ad, I have not heard, read, or through news or social media know of any 2020 voting irregularities in this county. To know the facts, I called the Sherman County Elections Office, and I also spoke with the county administrator, and I was told emphatically that there are no significant voting machine issues either from the 2020 election or now. I also went to the Swamp Source, their website, which I found had no, repeat, no references to any voting irregularities in Sherman County, none. So I ask you, is it broken? It's obvious that this group supports one of the two major parties, which of course is appropriate. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but their party won a majority of 2020 races within Sherman County. So I'm perplexed. If the county voting machines are broken, do they need to challenge the results of all their popular elected officials who are now in office? I feel their voting irregularity arg argument needs to be challenged. At the state and national levels, there have been approximately 60 plus 2020 voting lawsuits dismissed. The Supreme Court did not support these accusations. State and attorneys general say there was no systemic wrongdoing with voting machines. Countless unnecessary recounts, including at the expense of taxpayers, with no change in the overall outcome. Commissioners, I have no other agenda other than the truth and our laws to be followed. Please do not waste our taxpayers' money to fix something that I understand is not broken. I ask that you challenge this group to prove their accusations at their expense and then share the findings with the public. In closing, I will not insist that you do anything other than doing what is right for the voters and taxpayers of Sherman County. Thank you.
No applause. <laughs> no applause. <laughs> number no, item person number eight. Yeah, get out your court case. Can we uh, have some respect, please? Yeah. please? Thank you. Who is in our number eight? Madam Chair, we have Doug Kern of Brainerd speaking on voting machines and audit. Yeah, good, good morning. Uh, not broken. Me and my, my wife and my son each got three absentee ballots in the mail. We, had, we threw them away because I was so frustrated in our precinct or township we had in-person voting. And with that in-person voting, I, I'm one of the supervisors on that township board. I was so frustrated when I would see these ballots come through our mailbox. Uh, seeing that there were laws that were circumvented by our Secretary of State, Steve, Steve Simon, uh, there were laws that were, went right around the legislature. Um, when you look at some of the statutes that were mentioned, 206, I think it's 48, um, talks about how you have the authority to start a forensic audit, to start an audit. Uh, it's, it's, there's no precedence for or against, but the, the statute says you have the authority. When, when I hear county commissioners say, well, we sent it to Steve Simon, and Steve Simon says, no, we can't do it, Steve Simon was the one who circumvented the law. You know, you have that authority as county commissioners to step up to the plate and you know, just just put some integrity in our election. Uh, just, there, there's so many roads that I could talk about, so many ways that I could, I could explain it. The anomalies that we saw on election night, we were locked out of the courthouse. I don't know if you guys were locked out down here, but we were locked out of the courthouse where you couldn't go in and watch the ballots come in. Um, that's just one of many, many issues that happened on that night, um, election night. Uh, I just know that statute 206, in there where it talks about the auditing, you have the authority to do what's right. And if your constituents are, are saying do it, you know, I would say do it. But just knowing the way the election cycle went, it's not that we're accusing anybody of doing anything wrong other than we, we don't trust the system. And because that system has failed us, this, 20, this whole COVID thing threw everything into a tizzy. And we just want some integrity in our knowing that 2022 will not be a repeat of 2020. Uh, right now you have Shanghai and you have Beijing in lockdown. 14 million people in Shanghai. I, ha I have people that we know, our family knows, that are in Shanghai. And they've been in lockdown for over four and a half weeks. What happens in China will happen here five months later. Count it out, we're at election time. We do not want a repeat of 2020. That's the biggest thing that we're asking for is not a repeat of 2020. Thank you.